Hello malty munchers on malt mouthfuls. I'm Ralphie, welcome to the Bothy, welcome to Ralphie Review 935 and a big thank you for the malt mention to Faldsgraf. I have a single malt for you. This is what I'm going to be reviewing today because single malts tend to be my favourite. <coughs> That's better. You've probably noticed But um, <clears throat> I've had a cold, so my senses aren't at their best. But never mind, I do have my notes here, which I'll be referring to as required. Because this is the benefit of opening up a whiskey weeks, if not months, before reviewing it and spending quite a bit of time with it. This is quite, quite important, actually, because... Many people in in reviewing spirits, and particularly if they're judging at competitions, they really don't have a lot of time. Um, and you can learn a lot for about a whiskey in a short space of time. But to really get to the bottom of it, it needs some time. So take all the time you feel you need when you're drinking your whiskey. You're paying a premium for the smell and taste, so you may as well get the benefit of that. Anyway, without further ado, Machri Moor, which is basically, it's Isle of Arden single malt, but this is the peated version. And what you get is slightly toasty, distinctive peatiness. It's kind of toasty, firesidey, slightly maritime, so a little bit of saltiness in the nose. Quite rich vanilla notes, and barley sugar notes, which you would expect from First Fill X Bourbon casks, which is the case here. And um, it is, by the way, non chill filtered and natural colour. 46% and uh, basically quite transparent. A, a nice little tidy integrity bottle of whiskey. If you're looking for a permutation of Laphroaig or one of the other Isla stalwarts, you may be disappointed. But if, however, you are looking for an alternative to the increasing hype around Ardbeg, you will find this to be a quite a refreshing change taste. Big rich arrival. Barley sugar. Stewed fruit. Some banana in there. Spices. Good complex array of spice. When you add a little bit of water and in this instance I am adding uh, four millilitres of water. I could have been three, it could have been five. That's what I added. Whatever you add, it's entirely up to yourself. Um, is there any information in the back that uh, is worth sharing with you? Let's have a look, see. There we go. On the west coast of Isle of Arden, windswept and mystical. There you go, mystical speak bogs. Um, Bronze Age stone circles and standing stones are strewn. There we go. That's a whole different conversation. It's really, really interesting what archaeologists are discovering around the planet in terms of, of ancient stone structures. Uh, without getting too far away from the whiskey, it's just something that's fascinating me at the moment is the whole new level of awareness, discovery and disclosure of ancient monuments and further explanations as to their meaning. But in the meantime, how are we getting on with this <laughs> this Isle of Arran peated? They call it Machrimur, um, named after the big peat bog with the stone circles in it. Um, but 
it's quite a homogenised experience. And the difficulty is that when you take a good solid identity such as Aaron single malt, you can't automatically presume that as soon as you use the peated barley instead of the unpeated barley, that you're going to get spectacular results in the same context. And you find that it tends to be dry character single malts which deliver the peatiness much more dramatically and much more delicately. Here the peatiness is, it's been brought into the malt itself and it just becomes, it becomes um, an interesting permutation of Isle of Arden, but it's certainly not better. It's certainly not outstanding by a long chalk, but some, you know, you're going to enjoy it if, if you just like pe generalised peated whiskies. A word of advice is really give it time in the glass because the results are really quite sweet. So you have a sweet peated whisky, which isn't immediately visible as such. You've got to give it time. So this is something where you, you after a few glasses to familiar, familiarise yourself to the signature of the smell and taste, you're going to warm to it. It, it lacks significant complexity, but it's a decent, good quality single malt. And over time, you'll discover more character to it. Not dy dynamic in flavour, but you'll discover more character. In particular, it comes into its own when you've left the glass a while with a drop of water and it becomes this really sweet peat, almost a dessert peated whisky. And this is thing, something I think some, some reviewers fail to pick up on. Yep, cover that, cover that. So what will I give for a malt mark? For Machri Moore. I'm going to give this 90, 80, 84 out of 100. It's a malt mark, malt mates. It's an integrity malt mark. And that is my review. Now if you pop back for my extras, 935 extras, I shall be just plucking an old bottle of whiskey out of my stash and telling you all about it. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.